Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and yesterday we were all hit with extremely sad news. Marvel, and Netflix, really, canceled Daredevil. No season four. Even though the showrunners had already pitched season four, the writers had already outlined season four. They had a whole wall of arcs and everything ready to go, and they were getting ready to start working on the show, thinking they were going to get picked up for a renewal, and I guess at late Friday night, news broke. And that's never a good sign when it's late Friday night news broke it means the trades are all done for the weekend and it's going to have a limited impact until people talk about it on Monday, right? Because hopefully by then the impact is worn off. But this is the digital age. It doesn't work as well as that. You guys got to stop doing it. But with the cancellation comes a bit of hope, a glimmer, right? It's not all darkness in Matt Murdock's world. There's a little bit of light. And that comes in the form of this saying here from Marvel saying that Marvel promises more Daredevil adventures after Netflix cancellation. They promised more Daredevil. What that means, we don't entirely know. All right, but I'm here to talk about what it could mean. But first, let's take a quick look here. This is what they posted on their Daredevil uh, Twitter account last night. Uh, uh, Nelson Murdoch and Page, Justice Never Stops, and just uh, more of a, of, a, of a sad goodbye for right now, or at least the see you later. And that is really sad because... because <laughs> It, it, it was a fantastic show. I love Daredevil. I, I I utterly adore Daredevil. It's my favorite of the Marvel series. It's one of my favorite Netflix shows. And and I kind of assumed the cancellation was going to be coming, right? Where we're a month past season three's uh, premiere. There'd been no announcement of a season four. Uh, Iron Fist and Luke Cage being hit, taken out the same week Daredevil season three premiered. The writing was on the wall. Jessica Jones and Punisher season two. Those are next. Those are out. Those are done. Everything is being canceled after it finishes up its run. And the reason for that, in many people's uh, you know opinion, mine included, is that Netflix is cleaning house. They want to own what they own. Owned, right. They, they just opened or they're buying into that studio in Albuquerque. Uh, then they're also the reports today broke that they're going to possibly be moving over into uh, Pinewood Studios, getting a getting a place on the lot there. And that is big boy. That's big boy stuff. That's big league going up against the other studios. And I've talked about this before with Netflix, the amount of money that it earns, the amount of uh, the amount of reach that it has. It has the ability to become one of the key players in town. And it is. And it's flexing itself by doing this. But never mind the fact that it wants to own everything that it makes, which makes sense. Disney also has Disney Plus, which is going to be a direct competitor to Netflix. And Netflix wants to show it who's boss, which we already kind of figured that. But this is what Marvel says in their statement. They say here, Marvel is extremely grateful for the huge audience that loved Marvel's Daredevil. From the moment young Matt's first act of heroism to the birth of Paige, Murdoch, and Nelson, it has been an unbelievable journey. We are incredibly proud of the amazing showrunners and writers, with starting with Drew Goddard and Stephen DeKnight, Marco Ramirez and Doug Petrie and Eric Olson, Charlie Clark, Cox, Deborah Ann Wool, Elton Henson, Vincent D'Onofrio, and our casts who brought the characters to life with such excellence, and every one of the fantastic crews in NYC. We look forward to more adventures with the man without fear in the future. Now, of course, it doesn't say near future or far future, just future. So what does that mean? Which is a question, right? Which is a question on everyone's mind. What does the future hold for Daredevil, for the man without fear, for Foggy, for Deborah, you know, or for Karen, for, for everyone else, for the Kingpin? Well, here's my thoughts and theories on it. And it goes a couple different ways. So theory one is they're positioning him to move into the MCU at large. All right. And I think they're doing this. Um, because fans really want it. I think fans have been really pushing for it. Vincent D'Onofrio has been really making lots of noise out there on, on, on the internet about wanting to be a, a go up against Spider-Man, right? We, we, we know that D'Onofrio wants to go into the MCU at large. We know that fans also want that. We also know that fans want nothing more than Daredevil and Spider-Man to team up. And fans want nothing more than Captain America and Daredevil to team up. They want Charlie Cox and they want the other uh, defenders brought into the larger MCU. Uh, the other day at uh, at, a, at a Infinity War screening, they had a Q and A with uh, with the Russos, and they asked them about the Dare about the MCU characters or the Netflix characters, and they said like there's no way they're able to work with everyone's schedule in order to get them into the larger film. Well, now they don't have to worry about that. They don't have to worry about that, right? And I don't know if the reshoots are all done for Avengers uh, four. But the movie opens up in May, and that's still five months away. So, you know, six months away, actually. And if Daredevil is no longer shooting season four, having to prep for season four, uh, then 
then it's entirely possible that they could be, you know, building it up for a cameo, getting him ready to come in and do something over there with Disney. That is one theory, right? Bringing him into the larger MCU in Avengers 4. But where would that put him? No, they're not going to sit there and ever give him a movie. They're not going to give Daredevil a movie in the MCU, right? They should, but they're not going to. The timeline is wanting to be focusing way too much on the, on the, uh, uh, on the on the cosmic side of things. However, my theory with that, it does, I think, maybe possibly hold true. Captain Marvel, I think, is going to be the first bomb, really, in regards to the MCU. It's gonna it's gonna be one of its lowest grossing movies, uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with the response to J- James Gunn and and the whole situation with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Uh, people out there disagree with me on that one, but I'm telling you, fans have long memories. And a lot of fans are not happy with Disney and Marvel over the way that James Gunn was treated. And I think that is going to impact Captain Marvel, never mind the fact that the first teaser they showed really wasn't very good. It was kind of boring, right? It really was kind of boring. Um, And we haven't seen anything else since then, like not another trailer, even though Mary Poppins opens up here in a couple weeks. Uh, you figure they would drop a trailer, another trailer for that, like a full story trailer, or they would drop an Avengers trailer. They haven't done anything like that yet. So it makes me really wonder what exactly is happening in regards to Captain Marvel. But I'm wondering if the whole Daredevil side of it's a contingency. It's a contingency in regards to them wanting to, if Captain Marvel, let's say, fails, they can then go, oh, well, we're going to be bringing you guys Daredevil into the feature film or or the defenders into a feature film because they've already said that iron fist and luke cage are also going to have their stories continue as well right and that daredevil is going to have his stories continue jessica jones will have her story continue frank castle is probably done which is unfortunate which means that when 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 punisher season two comes out everyone has to watch it like opening weekend marathon that damn thing raise its numbers up to show that there is a love for this character because i loved this first season of punisher and I think that's a big thing. I think that's that could be a contingency. And I could be wrong, and I probably am wrong, but it's just a theory, right? I'm just letting you know it's a theory. Theory number two here, and this is where I think it's probably more accurate, is everyone's like, what about Disney Plus? Is it, are they going to be bringing the show to Disney Plus? The answer to that is simply no, they're not going to. There's 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 really no reason why they would bring it to Disney Plus. Uh, ultimately, what you're talking about here is bringing a show that's very violent, very dark, very adult oriented to a, to a streaming service that is never going to go past PG-13, right? So even though the show itself will be toned down if it ever did make its way to freaking Disney Plus, it's still not going to be there because they're not going to want to break up Disney Plus and Disney Plus kids. They're not going to want to have it broken down like that. They are clearly focusing it on a family friendly environment, which makes absolute sense. Like the movies, some of the, you know, like Pirates of the Caribbean and Lone Ranger and those movies that are going to be on there are going to be more the violent type, but that's again, more cartoony violence. And that's going to be like the, 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 the outskirts of where they're going to go, how far they're going to push it. But what people aren't really talking about though, what they should be talking about is Hulu. Now with Disney acquires Fox, they're going to have a pretty solid, pretty significant stake in Hulu, right? Not controlling, but very significant. And when an and AT&T that just purchased Warner Brothers wants to lose its signi- its stake in in uh, in Hulu, which makes sense ultimately, right? You don't really see, you know, it, it, it makes sense to kind of lose that because Warner's is now trying to branch out into multiple streaming services. They got three, by the way, three that they're working on, which is just insane to me. So you've got that. So if Disney goes and buys it, which I think right now that estimated value of 10% is about a billion dollars. So if Disney throws on the money and acquires that 10%, that gives them an even larger controlling stake. And then, of course, I think the last one who owns it is Paramount, who who has like the last bit of that one. Uh, so what you've got on that particular front is going to be a war over Hulu, and it could just be Disney buys out Hulu. And Hulu is going to serve as a gateway to Disney Plus for the 20 million Hulu users right now. Hear me out on that one real quick, okay? So right now, people get Hulu because it's an alternative to getting television uh, as it comes out, essentially. So people get Hulu, and then they can go, oh, I can get a service uh, and, and go get HBO or go get Showtime or Stars, which they can do because the way that telecom companies have broken up the country, in some regions, you're not actually able to get certain services. But through the but through the online stuff, you might actually be able to, so it helps out. Um, I don't know, I could be wrong, but that's kind of how I interpret it. And so ultimately, they're going to be selling Disney Plus as a standalone through Hulu for those users. It will also be its own thing, but it's going to have a, a portal through there. Then all the Fox stuff, all the more mature content, that's going to go to Hulu. That's all going to be dumped on Hulu because they want people to still go watch it there. And they're going to be able to put commercials in that shit and make a lot more money in regards to that. So they're going to do that. Then you've got 
uh, the the fact that you got Runaways already on Hulu, right? And the fact that uh, all the all the Marvel TV shows are all produced through ABC Television. So it, it, even though Netflix financed it, ABC Television is still the one that puts it on. So they're still going to be the ones that ultimately now are going to make the call. So they could move it to Hulu, which is going to have more of an adult themed or at least older audience themed approach and not be on the Disney Plus service, which is going to appeal to the families and the kids, which again makes total sense. So, so there are people who are in Hollywood right now that are saying that the shows are done, that the shows are done. They're saying that because Marvel's not going to want to spend the money. I don't know if I believe that. I think that I think that it's possible that, that they know these guys work on the small screen. Uh, they need to figure out a way in order to monetize that, though, and that would be Hulu. Run commercials on that. You make a lot of money. Uh, I think that's a really good way to go about it. But I could be wrong. We all could be wrong. We don't know what's going on with Kevin Feige. He hasn't talked about it at all. The the Marvel shows that are going to be going to Disney Plus, like uh, Loki and Scarlet Witch and and some, uh, Bucky and Falcon, those are all being produced by the actual ex- like producers at Marvel Studios. So those are like going to be basically just long movies produced by movie producers. And those are going to Disney Plus. But they could bring that stuff to Hulu and put it underneath the Fox banner. That would make sense. Like I said, I think they're going to be taking a lot of the darker elements of the Marvel movies and they're going to be moving them underneath Fox as a way to then sell it. Kind of similar to how Disney owns Miramax and Miramax put out Pulp Fiction, right? No one associates Pulp Fiction with freaking Disney, but it's true. They financed it. They made money off of it, right? And a lot of other movies that the Harvey Weinstein, the Harvey Weinstein put out in the 90s and 2000s. So I don't think it's the end of the world for Daredevil. I do think that it's going to be uh, a wait before he comes back. I would love there to be a cameo appearance in Avengers 4, but where Daredevil sits in the actual Marvel timeline is kind of hard to figure out. So we're going to have to wait and see. It's still unfortunate. I'm not happy about any of it, but this is where we find ourselves. So I I leave it to you. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Uh, Do you feel that this is going to be a good thing, a bad thing? Uh, Do you think we're ever going to see Matt Murdock again, or is it done? Uh, And if so, where do you think we're going to see him and where do you want to see him? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, or you guys can always call into our voicemail line at 818-350-3281. That is 818-350-3281. My name is, of course, Matt Jarbo. This has been Three Buck Theater. Thank you guys so much for being here. It means the world to me. I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.